I'm Dr. Abbasi. And I'm Kendra Yoder. Okay. We are here with the uh, Essence of Medicine, and uh, we are planning to do an introduction to neurological exam. Um, Kendra, you are planning to go into medicine, correct? Yes, I want to go to PA school. So, um, uh, can you please pass it on to uh, somebody need to answer, John? So, um, the, what do you think what, uh, when you are in the PA school? What, what, what would your job be? Have you uh, uh, had, a, uh, uh, had a chance to talk to PAs and so on? What, yeah. would be your, what would be your duties as a PA? Yeah, well, I think a lot of it would depend on what specialty I were to end up in. I think, like, for example, we work with uh, surgical PAs a lot, so then they're dealing with a lot of surgery prep, post-op appointments, stuff like that, versus if you were to go into a different specialty, like oncology, for example, mm -hmm. I think your day-to-day -day would look a lot different. So I think it definitely would depend on the specialty. I am personally interested in neurology um, or neurosurgery. So my ideal day-to-day -day would be seeing patients, um, doing neurological exams, um, maybe looking at imaging, whether it's brain MRI, CTs, spine yeah. CTs, MRIs, stuff like that, and trying to make diagnoses. But there is a path in the in taking care of the patient that is practically more or less the same, no matter what specialty you do. Okay, yeah. And uh, part of the path is actually taking uh, history. Yep, the HPI. Yeah, and the, uh, uh, in one of our live um, uh, podcast with Alison, we talked about taking, exa taking the history, you know, what to pay attention. But there is another part of uh, taking care of a patient, no matter where you are, is going to be the same, and that is physical exam. Mm -hmm. um, if, if people don't uh, notice that, but we practice for hundreds of years medicine without lab, without CT, mm -hmm. without computers. Yeah, we took care of the patient in a very profound way before we had all these additional tools. Mm -hmm. We do that without stethoscope. Yeah, no, we all no blood pressure. It took us uh, literally 2,000 years uh, uh, before we figured out that um, how to take the pulse. And really? somebody described that, like, Virchow described that based on the how he put two fingers uh, here, described how he feels that the pulse comes from, you know, from heart downward mm -hmm. and so on. So, so exam is a major part of what you are going to do. There are additional part in future podcasts we will get to that. And then physical exam is a, really a vast area. But neurological exam is a small part of the overall physical exam. But you may, how, how, how long do you think we have had MRIs? Oh, I don't even know. About 40 years. I was going to say, within 100 for sure. But. No, much less, much less. <laughs> we had, how long do you think we had CT CAT scan? About 55 years, yeah. so about 70s and so on, we started okay. having really having it and using it, but they were even rudimentary and not really good. Yeah. But still, we could figure out if uh, you had a problem like herniated disc. We mm -hmm. still could understand mm -hmm. where what level it was, or mm -hmm. we could understand where um, a tumor in your brain was. Amanda, mm -hmm. how do you think before you know now these days? We are losing, actually, in medicine, we are losing our ability to do a physical exam in a way that we used to do because we have a lot of additional tools. Mm -hmm. Now, um, if somebody comes to my to my clinic has a brain problem, one of the first things I do, I prescribe an MRI. But uh, uh, about 50 years ago or 70 years ago, they could precisely figure out where in patient's brain the problem should be or could be um, if patient has a set of symptoms. Mm -hmm. And the physical exam is supposed to exactly find uh, out about that. Now, um, that uh, is a truly an art and a talent to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But how would you see, feel, Amanda, as a, you know, as a patient going to your um, surgeon or spine surgeon neurologist and he just refuses to get MRI and just examine you and then make his all diagnostic with, uh, with um, just physical exam. 
How would you feel about that? Well, this day and age, I would be, I would think Concerned. I, yeah, I would think I didn't get what I came here for. Yes, yes. And that is the reason why this art is getting lost, because it, uh, this physical exam is completely dependent on the level of the experience of the surgeon, doctor, whereas if you have a tumor in the back of your brain, MRI will show that. You don't really need skills for that. Yeah, it's actually really interesting that you mentioned that because we might, we may be talking about a case later that actually is specifically a physical exam case. No images, nothing else mm -hmm. related to that. And Dr. Coach, he, found, he thinks he might, well, he has some interesting ideas about it. And I'm looking forward to that. Now, um, we are going to only talk about the neurological exam. So, Kendra. Neurological exam, um, it comes actually, uh, I'm, I doubt we can cover everything. I could mm -hmm. talk two days straight about neuro exam and not be done with that. Yeah. But it comes in certain groups of exams, and there are six of them. Okay. Um, obviously, they all are supposed to figure out if there's something wrong with your neurological system. What are, what are your neurological system? Well, you have your central nervous system and your peripheral nervous system. What is a central nervous system? So the central nervous system is going to be your brain and your spinal cord, which obviously we see a lot of spinal mm -hmm. cord um, symptoms here. And then your peripheral nervous system is going to be everything outside of that. So all of the nerves that are in um, your limbs and your torso. And, and obviously, you know, there is their input and their output of your brain in in no exam like you know if you have a belly ache i put my hand on and i feel if there is a mass or something mm -hmm. we don't do any of that with the brain do we no no we um what we do with the brain is please dr coach come and join hey. us so we what we do uh, uh, dr coach let's uh, uh, we have a chair for you yeah 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 come over uh, so with the brain we don't uh, literally um, touch it with our hands, mm -hmm. but we use all the paths that give the information to the brain and all the paths that take the information out of brain, we use this to diagnose the status of the how our brain and peripheral nerves are working. Let's start with the uh, path, first group of neurological exam, um, which we, we call higher brain function. What would you understand if I say higher brain function, Kendra? What, what do you imagine what that is? I think of higher level functions, um, like more things related to humans mm -hmm. versus anything another mammal could do. So like actually, executive functioning, stuff that like is, that. That is actually a very good description. For a long time, we have been very arrogant to believe that only we have consciousness. Mm -hmm that animals don't. Mm -hmm. Now we know it's not right. But traditionally, that plays in your corner, Amanda, because traditionally it used to be that anything that human does, an animal doesn't. Um, part of that is like consciousness. We thought animals don't have consciousness. Now we know it's wrong. Mm -hmm. We thought uh, only a human has intelligence and the problem solving. Now we know that's completely wrong. And we thought that only human has factual memory. We know that is even wrong. But more or less, uh, if factual, I would... Factual memory meaning what? Recognizing the face. We know now uh, prairie dogs recognize the face. We know crow, crows recognize the face of actual person. Let's get together. Center, yeah, bit. let's uh, come closer now. So, um, Amanda, what, uh, but just take it as a f uh, face value. Um, higher brain function, human does and animal does. What would you imagine? What would that be? Something that a human does and an animal doesn't. Traditionally, we thought that's the case, like concentration, intelligent. What else? Do animals talk? Animals communicate with each other. But I have then, chickens and they are <laughs> always talking to each other, actually. <laughs> but um, they, uh, I, I'm hoping when you go home, they don't talk in a language. They don't say, hey, Amanda, welcome back. Where is our food? It's our own language. It's our own language. <laughs> so, but traditionally, you know, this is what it is. 
that we consider animal doesn't and we do is uh, concentration, uh, awareness, um, memory, speech. Okay. So, um, Dr. Coach, how would you examine in a very practical way if I'm awake, alert, and oriented? How would you check me on that? Well, uh, I would uh, ask you a few questions. Go ahead, example. ask me. Okay. Um, what's your name? Um, my name is uh, Hamid Abbasi. Okay, so you're oriented to self. That's okay. good. Uh, do you know what year it is? It is 2022. Good. Do you know the date today? Uh, no, I don't. It is uh, 5th or 6th. It is October. It is October. Very good. Okay. Am I oriented to time or not? You are. We, it's, you know, we, usually, like, I'll ask a season, for example, at least what season are we in, you know, or what month are we in, that sort of thing. Within the month, I mean, I think most people aren't exactly always sure exactly what the date mm -hmm. is. So, I mean, um, then I might say, do you know who the president is? Well, that is goes a little beyond that, and that is as well something we usually check within the first group of neurological exam. And that is uh, about the, uh, um, you know, the spatial awareness uh, and so on. But let's start with something like that. I'm going to the ER. They call me for a trauma. And may I examine you? Sure. So, um, they, they, hey, uh, how are you? I'm Dr. Abbasi. You are looking at You see, many of them are very trivial. Mm -hmm. If you have a head trauma, you may not register that I even entered the room. So, I'm... Um, yeah, I'm seeing you are looking at me, your eyes are concentrating on me, and it seems that when I talk to you, you register and you respond to that. So you are awake and alert. So a lot of this non, is the first thing. A lot of nonverbal cues you're looking Absolutely. for. Absolutely. But if you wouldn't look at me, what would I do? I touch you at your shoulder. Hey, hey, <laughs> I'm Dr. Bossy. What is your name? And you tell me your name. Okay? Um, and that is actually, um, uh, we call that awake, alert, oriented. Mm -hmm. But it starts with awake and alert. What is the difference? What do you think? Now, let's uh, make an English quiz, Amanda. What is different between awake and alert? Can somebody be awake and not alert or yeah. vice versa? I think you could be awake with your eyes open, but not be alert as in Describe. Actually, that is a very good description description of it. That's exactly what it is. But the difference between awake but not alert, that's a huge, there is a range, huge range of neurological deficit that we already noticed that. So um, how would I be awake but not alert? Well, you would be having your eyes open. Um, if my you know, eyes are open, am I, am I awake if just my eyes are open? I guess not. You can sleep with your eyes open. Yeah, yeah. I've seen that. I've yeah. seen someone sleep with their eyes open. That's creepy, huh? Yeah, it was traumatizing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, I, I guess, awake as in, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, how no, to... we have made the science out of this yeah, stuff. So, so, the, so the, uh, the most basic level of being alive, but uh, but only being alive is being in a coma. And the definition of coma is when you don't have sleep-wake cycles. So if they would do an EEG test on you and look at your brain waves, they wouldn't be able to tell the difference between night and day. It would be all the same, basically pretty flat. Um, the next level up from that is called vegetative state. The difference between uh, being in a coma and being in a vegetative state is that when you're in a vegetative state, first of all, your eyes are open. Um, but uh, you can't... Um, uh, you can't track anything. So, and you do have sleep-wake cycles. But for example, uh, if I would put my finger in front of your face and go like this, your eyes wouldn't move. Okay. Uh, then the third thing is called minimally conscious. When you're minimally conscious, it means that you have sleep-wake cycles, just like when you're a vegetative, in a vegetative state. Uh, but now you actually can respond to environmental stimuli. So, for example, like the tracking is one. Or if I if I punch you in the shoulder, you might respond with them some kind mm -hmm. of movement or something like that. So, and that is the difference between awake and alert, responding to stimuli. Okay. So okay. in the vegetative state, you're awake, but you're not alert. Yeah, that you, can be, okay. you can be awake, but not alert. Okay. Yeah. So even, even the last one that you mentioned where you can respond to external things, would you could you consider that alert or no? No, well, 
these are not, I'm not talking about pain stimuli. That's a different category. But if you can uh, react to um, sensory stimuli, I mean, touching, hearing, seeing, then you have to be alert because if you're not alert, you cannot respond to a stimuli. You don't register a response. Practically registering what happens around you, that's being alert, right? Yeah. And that way to check on that is, you know, giving you some sensory stimuli, not pain, because pain has its own pathways. Yeah. You don't have to be even awake or alert. You can be in coma and still respond to pain. Wow, yes. I know that. Yeah, so take the pain out. Mm -hmm. Any other sensory beside pain, if you respond to that in a proper way, then you're alert, okay? So um, uh, now, Okay, awake, alert, and oriented. Now, there are, we say in a, in a neuro exam, we actually write it A, A, O times three, or A, A, O times four. That five words, letters, numbers, is give you a lot of information. So if I say uh, A, A, O, three, I mean awake, alert, oriented, times three. What does that times three mean? Now, number one, as Dr. Coach asked me, what's your name? Are you aware of who you are? That's the highest level. If you lose that, then it's a bad situation neurologically. You can talk about philosophically. If you don't know who you are, you know, are yeah. you? Well, that's you know, like funny the is that you have, But you have to ask the question because you'd be surprised how many people, how many patients can carry on a full conversation. But when you ask them, who are you? They can't do really sure. yeah. like yeah. that. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah. That you can you can sort of compensate yeah. somehow. But right. it has to be in a very specific way. Can you please tell me your full name? Correct. That's right. This is the way you ask that question to get a proper response. You don't ask them, who are you? Why are you? Yeah. So I, I remember exist? I remember right. that the Avengers, you know, when yeah, they yeah. are fighting and that the uh, Star Lord is asking that, that uh, Spider Man so where is Gomorrah? And then that funny guy uh, or uh, Iron Man says, I up you. <laughs> Who is Gomorrah? And the <laughs> oh, yeah. funny man says, I up you. <laughs> Why is, is Gomorrah? <laughs> so yeah. it's not a philosophical question. Please tell me your full name. That is how you check them for oriented time one. Now, the second thing about being oriented about, and this is physiologically important for us, right? The first thing is to yourself. The second thing is to where you are. And uh, Amanda, where are you right now? In Sky City. In what city? Brownsville. What country? In the United States. Okay. You would be surprised that yeah. uh, if people lose that ability to recognize where they are, because this is survival for us, where we are. Am I in the den of a bear or am I... Uh, 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 on a bridge about to drown, or am I in the hostile territory, or am I in the friendly territory? This is who we are is the highest level. Second is actually where we are. Now, and the third one is, can you tell me what year it is? 2022. What month? October. And that is suffice to consider them uh, uh, oriented times three. The fourth one is to the situation. Dr. Coach, what are you doing here? Why are you here? <laughs> so, Dr. Coach is awake, alert, oriented times three, not times four. Would you it, didn't test the elephants. <laughs> would it ever be the case if someone doesn't know who they are, but they know where they are and the, yes. everything else? Nature throws you everything. So, would that still be like mm -hmm. if they knew what they were doing, where they were? Extremely they, rare. It usually, I mean, everything is statistic. Uh, everything usually goes in that direction. Things that are deeper in you, they are hardest to get away. Like literally, the language that you learn as a child, it is uh, the, that the last language you are going to lose. Or um, if uh, if you start like having dementia, you start losing memory. You lose more recent memory. The older memory are last things to lose. Now talking about memory, that's the next thing that we think, we human do, we are very arrogant as human. We think we do and the animal doesn't. Mm -hmm. Memory. 
how do I, the, the coach, I know you know that, but let's put them uh, to use. Is how, how, would you check, how would you check my memory? My memory is good. Maybe like one of those memory card games? Oh, yeah, let's get see, card games. See, I guess the question is, <laughs> Are you testing short-term or long-term memory? Yeah, that's a good Because that could be a really good, good short-term In some memory. psychological exam, actually, they do bring cards and so on. There's math battery. You can imagine I'm not taking any cards to the ER when I'm going there calling <laughs> me for a trauma yeah. and somebody's dying and so on. And Maybe you, like, put two fingers, take them, and then say how many fingers did I hold? Yeah, they're, they're standardized way of doing that. Did you see that? You could invent a new memory yeah. test, mm -hmm. okay? We do that two-finger test, but that's for something else. So we try not to confuse things. Sure. So what? how do you think you, you can check my memory? I am, we are still in the first package. I think we can do six podcasts from this, from each package. Yeah. We probably yeah. should, yeah. actually. We should. Let's, down let's, the let's, let's not rush it. Today, we are just going to talk about the neurological and exam. And I want to talk about Dr. Coach's case. Yeah. Let's then, let's then uh, no, continue. How would you check my memory? So do you check working memory? You are checking my memory. You decide. I don't know, because <laughs> now I'm getting muddled in the details. Right. Let's see. Um, I give you a list of words. I give you five words. And what I'm, five words? Apple. Black, interesting, interesting. Blue. Okay. Now let me do that. <laughs> and now I come back in a minute and I tell you to tell me the words. Okay. Later. Really so that's there is a, that's them. pretty good, but there is a method to that. Okay. okay. So remember, repeat okay. apple. Apple. Penny. Penny. Table. Table. What, why did I ask you to repeat that? make sure you understood me so it's not a I'm language your memory. barrier okay i'm not checking your hearing problem yes exactly or your speech problem yep. I, I i want you to repeat that so you repeat that now i have to give the memory a little time mm -hmm. okay so i'm going to go to the second part of exam concentration so um kendra 100 minus 7 Okay, so yeah. Serial <laughs> seven. No, serial seven or serial four. That is what we call it. Okay. okay. Serial seven. Okay. So um hundred minus seven. Ninety-three. Minus seven. See, now I'm like, okay, how my are you math is do this so bad. Let's, let's yeah. Go, let's yeah, go. how do you know if, if they're too bad at math? No, no. This okay. is not this is okay. this is basic. Now, once you fail at that, I go to serial four. Okay. Forty minus four. Forty minus four? 4D minus 4? 40. 4, 0, minus okay. 4. You see that? 36. That's minus 4. 32. Minus 4. 28. Minus 4. 24. Oh. <laughs> so you see, you go either uh, serial 7, we call that serial, okay. serial 7, seven. or serial 4. Depending on their math skills. De depending, <laughs> okay. on the, depending on the status. Okay. okay. What were those three uh, words I told you? Apple penny table. So I was gonna say, what if I don't pass this? Yes, yes, short term memory is okay. Now, now we go to the long term memory. Okay. Okay. Who is the president? Joe Biden. Before that. Donald Trump. Before that. Barack Obama. Before that. I was like seven. Okay. So <laughs> George Bush. Yeah. Well. I think. Yes. Yeah, that yes. Was yes, it. yes. Okay. Yes. But you see that there? Um, somebody. This is such a major event in anybody's life in the mm -hmm. United States. It is really hard not to know that or remember that. Yeah. Okay. But the, the interesting thing is that that really depends on your cultural upbringing. And That's I was true. just going to so ask those that about kind the of math. I don't love those questions. Well, even the math as well. So yeah. I've, I've definitely had, and I'm sure you have also, we've had patients that, let's say, come from another country and even in their country didn't have any yeah. education. Mm -hmm. So they can't read their own language. They, they don't, for example, even know how to read a clock. Right? Mm -hmm. So. A lot of the questions that we ask are based on some fundamental assumptions that might not be true across the board for patients. Might not be, but generally we have to have a common right. denominator. Right. So, Dr. Coach, who's the president? Joe Biden. Before? Barack Obama. <laughs> you missed him. <laughs> no, I didn't. He wasn't president. I was just thinking, like, because, you know, some people think, like... Okay, but let's continue that. Okay. Uh, before that? Before that was Barack Obama. Before uh, Donald Trump. Before? Uh, George Bush. Before? Was... 
<laughs> Clinton. That was funny. Before that? It was, uh, let's see. George, George Bush, Bush Senior? Oh, senior. Bush Senior. Before that? Was, was it Carter? No, Bush. Reagan. That's what I was going to guess. Before? That was Carter. Before? 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 Uh, let's see, before Nixon. All the way to Johnson. Johnson. All the way to Washington. Johnson. Before? Before Johnson. <laughs> what is the normal? Oh, How many presidents yeah. is normal? Oh, no. Oh, no, 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 this is not the test. Oh, he's They're just, just playing. <laughs> They're just playing. No. They're just They're playing. Really no. No. <laughs> this is funny. In the Daily Show, they go to Iran. This guy finds a random dude on the street in Iran. Um, and he asked the president, and he goes all the way to Roosevelt. Oh, this wow. random dude in Iran. Yeah, that's, that's better than me. You to go, find it on, go find it on YouTube, you know? That is, there is a show um, with John Stewart and uh, Jason something, what's his name, went to Iran 10 years ago or 12 years ago. Watch that. That is very good to know. About the the so social consciousness and the level of you know, knowledge of people in Iran, just please go and watch that. So, memory. So we did a very alert oriented memory uh, calculation or um, abstract thinking. What else do we think that we do and uh, animals don't? Planning. Mm, yeah, no, no, actually, no. no. Animals, animals plan. plan. And, but no, this is something we can check. You know, it's an exam. It's a patient is in the ER. We are not talking abstract things. We are talking actual. Okay, okay. Major thing. We are doing it all the time. We are doing it right now. Okay. Speech. Okay? So, Dr. Coach, check my speech. Well, I just did. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you spoke very well. <laughs> thank you, um, thank you. Yeah, I mean that's true. Like uh, that's actually one of the things that we do, sort of like without even. Um, it's not a. We don't always do it as a formal test. We just know if we're communicating with the patient, then we can say patient is fluent or patient is not fluent. Um, and then if the patient is not fluent, there could be you know the reasons why is it some uh, some sort of aphasia or something mm -hmm. like that. But. Uh, yeah, it's a. I don't know of, a, of, a, of an actual uh, sort of formal validated test for that. Yes, there is. Though in the ER, in the for neurosurgery, there is one. Yeah, what is it? Repeat. No ifs, ands, or buts. That's right. Yeah. Mm. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, Repeat. No ifs, ands, or buts. 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 And that's what the patient has to say. Yeah, that is a you know standardized thing that we ask the patient in the ER because. When you go to the ER, it's loud. Yeah. Everybody's running around. Patient had an accident. Five people are trying to get things in. You don't want to, hey, how was your day? What are you doing? Yeah. What, how, did you have an accident? Did you drink? Uh, is that why you and your whole family are in the ER now? And we have to save your life? Is, what yeah. do you do? Yeah. No, it has to be a standard thing that within the shortest amount of time gives you maximum information. And that is, repeat, no ifs, ands, or buts. No ifs, ands, or buts. That's it. That has, like, all the vowels in it, too. That is probably why we chose that. Yeah, yeah it's a good and observation. That's, that is. It also tells you a lot. So, for example, um, in certain kinds of strokes, a person loses the ability to repeat something. So, number one is testing, can, can I, they... Go ahead. Can I guess which aphasia? Okay. Okay, well, you are talking about aphasia. A, A... Like in anything, make me there isn't there or it's none. Is it practically like apathy, meaning you don't have any um, um, apathy or uh, uh, agnosis, meaning noses, no, noses, meaning from Greek, from knowing, agnosis, meaning not knowing. Aphasia, aphasia, meaning speech as well in uh, Greek, and aphasia means no speech. Okay, so. Now we are talking about aphasia, a huge higher brain function. So, go ahead, Kendra. Because there's the two main ones, correct? Broca's right, and yeah. Wernicke's. Yeah, which is which, you know? Broca's is when they know what they want to say, but they can't 
get the syllables out. So like the famous patient Tan, all he could say is Tan, Tan, Tan. Versus Wernicke's is the fluent aphasia where it sounds like they're speaking very well and they're saying words, but what they're actually saying doesn't make any sense. How do we call that? That they just bring word salad out. If you don't pay attention, you think it's a speech, but if you pay attention, that makes no sense. I don't want to say that, but some politicians are like that. Saying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, but they so just I say words. But if you check out that, what is that word? What's the diagnostic word for that? That you just bring word salad out, but it, they don't make sense at all. Is it not the, the fluent aphasia? No, it's a, it's a, we, it's a, we have a word for that. We call that confabulation. Oh, that yeah. I didn't know that, though. Yeah. yeah. Confabulation. That so That's which, it. Which so one is the repeating Wernicke, one? Wernicke, they have confabulation. Okay. I mean, they speak words, but they don't make no sense. They can't produce fluent language, but it just doesn't make sense. But whereas in the broker, um, what's an other name for broker? Affluent. We call that motor aphasia. Okay. Wernicke, we call it sensory aphasia because okay. it cannot sense, make sense of it, sense it. Okay, but the broker is a motor aphasia, meaning um, we understand what you say. I understand what you say, but I cannot produce those vowels and words the proper way. That's what, there's another way we describe it. We call that like telegram, like uh, uh, speech. Nobody uses tele send telegrams anymore. But so for so you know, um, I still used to send telegram, yeah, and you would send it. Money you would pay what would be by words. So it would be no niceties. Like you wouldn't say, hello there, I'm coming next uh, uh, Monday evening. You would say, come, coming Monday, 5 p.m. Or 1700. Coming Monday, coming Monday or arriving Monday, 1700. Because anything else? you will have to pay a lot more. I remember when I was in Turkey and I had to send a telegram to my family, um, it was a lot of money for me then. You know, it was like like $3 per word. Oh, wow. Yeah, to send it from Istanbul to Germany. So you can understand that <laughs> you just... That's come to the point quicker. Maybe yeah. People should... Do like that. Yeah, yeah. 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 really be <laughs> Why use lot word when you were <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that we, If you do that, we lose a lots of words that are between the words that we communicate. Our, our beauty of language and human communication is not just uh, information uh, uh, that we pass on, but the feeling that we pass on with those information. All of that get lost. If we would do that in a telegram. Yeah. So, um. Um, there are a few other things with that, but I think uh, to save time and talk about Dr. Coach case. Oh yeah, we it's stop. Really interesting. We stop here, and we will continue this. This is to be continued because I think um, I can talk months about neurological exam and still not be done. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Coach, let's talk about your case. Yes. So uh, this was a female patient, 24 year old patient who came with received complaint of. Uh, occasional back pain. Um, you know, could it get as bad as like eight or nine out of ten? Uh, especially when she would, um, let's say, pick up her young daughter who's a year old. Um, uh, initially, it started about seven or eight years ago, um, and she would only have these sort of, she called them attacks, uh, maybe once or twice a year. But uh, as she moved forward in time, uh, they, they got more and more frequent. Um, and that was the back pain or back sciatica, back pain. just no, back pain. Yeah, just... Yeah. No, nothing uh, down the legs, only in the back. In Germany, we used a lot the word for back pain that not many people use it here. We still use here in the United States. We called it lumbago. Lumbago, yeah. We don't use it much. In this we yeah. don't use it anymore here. Yeah. But yeah. so we are, we are talking about attacks like of lumbago. Back pain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. A few times a year with exertion. Okay, yes. please go on. So, uh, so in my exam, so I examined her. Of course, a neurological exam. And as part of my exam, and musculoskeletal slash neurological, so uh, during my exam, um, I always uh, palpate 
uh, different areas, particularly the erector spinae muscles along the spine to see if there's any tenderness. And so I was doing that, and yeah, she has some tenderness in the expected places. But as I got around the L4 level, she said something interesting to me that I've never actually gotten before from a patient. She, she said, I said, is this tender? And she said, I can feel that you're touching it, but I can't feel that you're putting any pressure on it. And I said, really? So I pushed really hard, and she said, it's the same. It's the same. So I said, that's really interesting. So I went and I, I, I got the same response to about the S2 level. Um, and then beyond that, she could feel tenderness and pressure, but she couldn't feel pressure. So I said, let me, let me do something else. Cause I know that the, the pressure pathway is the same as the, as the pinprick pathway. Mm -hmm. So I literally got a pin and I pricked her not so that I could break the skin, but I wanted to see. And above the L4 level, she, she was like, yes, I definitely feel that. Below the L4 level, she could not feel any pinprick. Um, and I even tested her a couple of times. I didn't even prick her at all. I said, did you feel that? She said, no, that I pricked her. Did you feel that? No. I mean, so, you know, I don't think she was faking it. She couldn't have been. You know, she wasn't looking. Uh, and uh, so I figured, you know, this is, uh, I could have, if I had the, my tools with me, I could have done like vibratory sense and I could have done uh, I have it all in my, my office. That's oh, what really? I was thinking. I have the, yeah. I have the, I have the tuning yeah, fork. Yeah, the tuning fork, yeah. yeah. So that, I didn't know. Uh, but uh, uh, from now on, I'm going to have mine. I, I didn't bring mine. I don't usually get a chance to use it. But uh, in this case, it's very interesting. So, uh, you know, what could that be? Is that connected to her back pain? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I've definitely certainly seen people with spinal cord injuries who have that kind of thing as well. That's, uh, uh, and what I didn't test, what I should have tested was temperature, because that's the same pathway, the, the uh, spinal thalamic pathway. One of the pathways that we should up. talk one day, you and I, and with the rest of the team, about the butterfly of the, because, you know, our sign is butterfly, in the spinal cord, there's a butterfly. Yeah, I know. Is that, that why that's our logo? No. Oh, okay. There's a few like, that would have been really good. Okay. That's a good idea, though. <laughs> Just oh, yeah, let's say it is. Let's say it is. <laughs> uh, but that's right. That's, that's a very fascinating conversation, the cross-section of the, of the spinal cord. Yeah. The butterfly, the what butterfly. is where? Let's yeah. talk about it in one of the future yeah. podcasts. You yeah. and I. Yeah, that's Let's great. do it. That's so, okay, so continue. So, I mean, I sort of... Uh, you know, I thought to myself, I could, I could work this up. I mean, there are different kinds of... Uh, lab test you can do, for example, sometimes B12 deficiency might cause something like that. Um, uh, certain kinds of syphilis might cause something like that. Thyroid could cause something like that. Um, but I, you know, it's not really what I do. So I, I said, <laughs> I would just refer to you to a neurologist for that. We'll still treat the pain, which may or may not be connected, but at least I think that it's worth uh, going to a neurologist for. Um, I didn't even really think that an EMG would make sense because of where it was. I mean, it's, it's not- EMG perfect. more for Lower what, is an, what is an EMG? Right. Oh, good question. So uh, EMG is a, a, well, technically EMG, electromyography, is a needle exam that we do. We stick a needle into a patient's muscle, and we listen to the electrical activity within the muscle, and we watch the waveforms on the screen. Uh, the other part of the, what we loosely call EMG is called the nerve conduction study or nerve conduction velocity study, uh, which is similar but different. In that sense, what we do is we put an electrode on a person and we send electricity down the person's nerve and we measure how fast the electricity moves down the nerve. The faster it goes, the healthier the nerve. More myelination. So myelination. So we're actually, with EMG, you can only test myelinated nerves. Okay. EMG isn't sensitive for unmyelinated nerves or not specific for unmyelinated nerves. So, so and then we know sort of how fast they should go. Right. And for specific nerves, uh, if they are within certain range, they're okay. If it's uh, way beyond that, are uh, specific for certain kind of um, diseases that goes with the with those nerves. Okay. So things that you won't use EMG to test for uh, are things anything that has to do with the central nervous system. So uh, things like multiple sclerosis um, or uh, really anything that's central, uh, EMG won't pick up on that. Really. Also, EMG won't pick up on very small nerve fibers. So there's something actually called small fiber neuropathy. Uh, you'll get a normal EMG. So a lot of people come to us with numbness and tingling, uh, and we can't figure out what it is. EMG is normal. That may be small fiber neuropathy. There's different kind of tests you do for that. But um, but what it is good for is are things that we deal a lot with, that you and I deal a lot with every day, mm -hmm. things like radiculopathy. You can diagnose radiculopathy with it, which is where the, the root of the nerve uh, is being 
depressed or pinched. Um, you can also diagnose carpal tunnel syndrome, cubital tunnel syndrome, which is a different nerve in the elbow that you can test. Um, and uh, uh, it's useful for a lot of things. Um, and it's useful for some really complicated uh, diseases like uh, Lou Gehrig's disease or ALS you can diagnose with, uh, with EMG as well. Um, personally, I wouldn't. I personally wouldn't do that. I would say that if I thought they had that, I would send it to a neurologist. Uh, so what is going on with this patient? So I don't know. I don't know what it is. It could be several things. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, although I'm very curious about it, but I decided to not work it up myself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let a professional neurologist do it because it's really more their, their area than mine. Um, but it could be a number of things. It could be, as I said, it could be a spinal cord injury, although she has no motor dysfunction, no weakness at all. The only sensory dysfunction is right there. Everything else is perfectly normal. So it's, you know, it's, if it is a spinal cord injury, it's a very strange one and a very minor one. Uh, um, I have an idea, but I'm not sure. Um, I have seen something like that in a lot of my patients where I have a foraminal, extra foraminal, uh, especially foraminal uh, disc herniation. What happens there, there's a ganglion of the sensory nerve right. is right in the foramen, meaning that, see, our nerves are made of a body of the cell, and then a long path, we call it axon, and then a shorter path, we call it a dendrite, that practically this nerve cell keep the axon and dendrite input and output alive. Now, that ganglion for sensory is right where the foramen is. The and hole. The, the foramen. It, yeah, the foramen is the hole where the nerves are coming out of the spine. The nerves comes out of the spine, and there is a what we call a ganglion, sensory ganglion, right there. The dorsal root ganglion. Yeah. Dorsal root ganglion, and if that sensory ganglion is pushed in a proper way, it can simulate any kind of sensory. You can lose one quality versus another, and so on. Generally, generally, we know that some um, nerves are more susceptible than the others. Like the the strongest nerves are the alpha motor neurons. Nature doesn't want you to lose them. And then after that, we know that the, uh, the sense of pressure, it's a, the, I think the, either touch or pressure is one of them is more sensitive than the other. It has all to do with the diameter of the nerve and the myelination of the nerve and so on and so forth. So um, so I have seen that patient may have a foraminal nerve um, disc herniation. So I ordered imaging. Just for, yeah. I was going to ask, was there any yeah. imaging? There's no imaging, so I ordered it. Yeah, yeah. So we'll that's, that. that's an interesting case. Yeah, we should follow up on that. I will. I will. We should follow up in one I'm, of the I'm, next. I'm seeing her every week, also for um, for um, uh, my, my brain failing me for my injections that I do. So I'll yeah. see her for my trigger point injections. So she has a bunch of trigger points as well. So I'll see her and see you know. We'll, Excellent. Yeah, we'll follow her, yeah, and we will follow up and find yeah. out what's going on. Now, and then update everyone else. Well, <laughs> it has been a good discussion. Amanda, did you get what you were expecting from? Neurological exam, I you know, I wasn't thinking that we can go through all of it, but we covered one area of the neuro exam, which is the higher brain function, and then we discussed it. Yeah. We should continue this. Uh, one another area, then the other areas of the neurological examinations are what are the other areas? Uh, motor. No, let's start with the head. Cranial oh, nerve. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was just throwing them out motor. There. So higher brain function, cranial nerve. Motor, sensory, mm -hmm. what's next? Reflexes? Coordination. Coordination, okay. Good job. Okay. Wait, where, do okay. Huh? where do reflexes fall? Where do reflexes fall? Under coordination? Under coordination. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Coordination, we're looking at like... We call them reflex, reflexes like coordination. Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you very much for being with us. Thanks for joining us. And you have a great weekend. Bye-bye.